Welcome to Elevating La Cultura podcast, a space where I talk with Latinas who are passionate about what they do and are willing to share their passion with others to change the narrative, especially for the next generation. Each season is centered around different topics, but all with a Latina perspective. This is season six and is going to be featuring Latinas in the food space. I hope this season is inspiring and perhaps even nostalgic as we hear stories we can relate to. I'm so excited to share these stories and talk about food. So vamonos and let's get into it. Today, I'm so excited to talk to Vanessa. She took over a taqueria in the Belmont Cragen area and is continuing her family's traditions and legacy. So please enjoy our conversation. Hola, I am here with Vanessa, my next guest, and I'm so excited to hear all about her restaurant, Su Taqueria Talis, and to hear her story and how she came to open it. So Vanessa, before we start, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Vanessa Landa. I am um, daughter of, well, I'm a, uh, I have an older brother, a uh, younger sister, and we are a family of three. And um, me, I'm married now. I have a daughter who's three years old, and um, I am a co-owner of Sutaqueria Talis. Oh, co-owner. So who is your other co-owner? It's my mother. <laughs> Oh, so that's amazing. Daughter. Yes. So I'd love to hear how you came to open your restaurant. Like what brought you to where you are now? Sure. So um, my story is a little bit different just because I actually didn't come here and open it myself. My father started this business in 2009. It was not until um, 2017, November of 2017, I lost my job. And um, so a couple of months, I was just like, you know, I was just relaxing. <laughs> you know, I was like, OK, let's see what what am I going to do? I, I wasn't sure. I was just taking some time off. And it was um, then when all of a sudden my father decided that, you know, he was done with the restaurant business. And I was like, wait a minute, like you're like done <laughs> And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's been enough. I'm done. And I was just thinking to myself, well, you know, I lost my job. Um, maybe God is putting this into my plan or, you know, God probably has a plan for me and um, maybe I should take over. But I didn't want to do it by myself. The reason why I say that is because um, so the restaurant was open 24 hours at that time. And I was like, there is no way I can do a 24 hour business. And, you know, I just felt like I couldn't, I felt like, I felt like it was just too much. <laughs> like I wanted to do it. I thought it was something that was probably put into me. Like, you know, God was putting this into me because I had lost my job and it was probably something for me. But again, I felt like I couldn't do it by myself. So, you know, then I, I was like, okay, who can I do it with? And of course my mother, you know, we're always together. We always support each other. And I was like, hey, mom, you know, like, so and she's like, so she thought about it. She's like, yeah, we can do it. We, I think we can do it together. She wasn't working by then either. So that's how that's how we started. And that's how I just took over the restaurant. But my father was the one who started this business. That is so interesting. What was the transition between your father owning the business and it being open 24 hours to what you decided to create with your mother. So at that time, I wasn't sure, you know, I didn't want to stop serving the community 24 hours just because we, the customers were already here. Everything was already in the restaurant. Like, so, you know, changing, making a change was scary. So I was like, you know, we need to keep it open 24 hours at least for some time until we figure out how to make changes little by little. So we kept it open 24 hours for, I want to say maybe even a year, but then the pandemic hit. And that's when we needed to make changes. And, you know, I, when the pandemic hit, there was no way we were able to keep the restaurant open 24 hours. Everything started to slow down. And um, even at some times, you know, there we kept the employees just because we knew that, you know, 
they needed to pay their bills as well. And these were employees that were passed on from my father to us. And they had been in the restaurant, working with him in the restaurant for since the beginning. So, you know, it felt like, you know, we can, if we could keep, if we can keep them, let's keep them because, you know, they, they have been here forever and they also need to, to pay their bills. And it was hard. It was hard time. So there was some times where we, we were just here in the restaurant cleaning, you know, just deep cleaning, doing things, trying to stay afloat. And, um, that at the beginning, we just, kept it 24 hours. But like I mentioned earlier, after the pandemic, that's when um, we needed to make changes. And we were like, okay, we need to cut down the hours. We need to make serious changes because there people weren't coming out. Everyone was staying home. <laughs> so even then too, um, we didn't have any delivery services. We didn't have Uber Eats. We didn't have Grubhub. We did not have any online ordering, none of that. That's when, you know, I was like, okay, I need to get on it. Like, I need to, we need a website. We need some online ordering that connected with Uber Eats, with Grubhub. And that's how, that's when we made changes. And that's how we kept the restaurant open after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's always so hard for, like, as a business owner, if you have employees to, like, do the best that you can because it's, like, you impact their lives as well was there any uh like maybe collaboration between the employees especially during the pandemic like how can we make this work yeah and you know they even many of them were trying themselves you know to give us advice and things like you know what can we probably do this or that you know oh we don't have i'm like yeah we don't have online ordering let's get online ordering too you know Everyone was ordering through delivery apps. So that's when, you know, even they were advising to get, you know, connected with Uber Eats and Grubhub and anyone that we could, you know, to keep the restaurant open. And they were, I have to say, they were very supportive too, because they were trying to find, you know, different ways to, you know, keep the restaurant open. Mm -hmm. That's good when you have a support system and you have employees that, like care just as much as you do as the owners. I think it really helps, especially like the connection uh, yes. from employee to owner. Like mm -hmm. you feel connected at, as like we're in this together, yes. uh, which I think is crucial if you do have employees. I think that relationship is really important to uh, stay connected and to have that trust Mm -hmm. with each other and now that you mentioned that like you said um having that trust and connection with the employees is very important i i agree with that and i as i mentioned to them sometimes you know like i say we're in this together you know we work for we work it's like we're family because most of the time you know employees spend most of the time in in their at their job rather than at home so, you know, being um, supportive to each other, helping each other. And I feel like that's very important. Yeah. Was the transition between like when your father was the owner to when you and your mother were co-owners because the employees already kind of knew you, was the transition that much easier? Um, I, yes, it was because, you know, at that time, when my father owned the business, I wasn't really involved in the restaurant. So, but I, they knew who I was. So I did come around and stuff like that. So, um, it was, especially with the, with the, um, employees that have been here since day one with him, it was much easier because like I mentioned earlier, it was like family. We felt like we knew each other for a very long time. Mm -hmm. How did the the menu change or did it change <laughs> so um at that time it didn't change like i mentioned earlier i was to be honest we were scared to change it because of you know the customers that we already had it was like okay so do we make changes and just see if it works out or do we keep it the same and maybe change it later 
you know so it was a very hard decision we were we weren't sure of how to go about that but after speaking to my mother and thinking about you know what was the best to do we decided to keep the menu as is and um just because customers already knew they were coming here for specific reasons specific you know um options i was like if we change it would it be a good thing or a bad thing i don't know i mean we have like my mom has really good cooking so that i wasn't so concerned about that it was just because of you know changing it all of a sudden and i don't i didn't know how the customers were going to react so we kept it the same we kept it the same but slowly we just tried in, tried introducing um, new recipes and even now um just the other day my mother and i were talking and we're like you know i think we're pretty much comfortable now you know people um we have the customers i think that we've been here for quite a few years and we feel like maybe we should start bringing like our own recipes our true own recipes uh, like i tell my mom like you have really good cooking like you need to bring that you know sazon to the restaurant that you have mm -hmm. that's amazing i always love when like you bring your own like your family, your personal touches to the cooking, like because like the Latinx culture is so tied to food and that's how we express love. I just love the stories where it says, even on the menu, it's like, oh, this is my mom's recipe, the fam famous pozole or like, and then it becomes a staple and it's like, everyone goes there for that. Um, so that that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's something that we've been talking about like lately a lot because I feel like okay, it, now is the time. Like I feel like we're ready. Like we should start bringing those recipes into the restaurant. And um, just recently, we were talking about you know it's like caldo season now. You know it's getting cold out. People want to eat caldos, and <laughs> we were eating caldo de res the other day. And I was like, even my brother, you know, he was at the table, and he's like, why don't you guys bring this caldo to the restaurant? And like, we are, we are going to because he's like, yeah, you know, this is like comfort food. Like you know, it just feels like you're eating at home, and it's just so good. And I'm like, yeah, we're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring it to the restaurant. Yeah, I remember I grew up in the suburbs and even now, like when my father wants some caldo de pollo, like mm -hmm. he will come to the city and like we will look to see who is selling the, yeah. the caldo. And uh -huh. it's so hard because some people only sell it on the weekends and some people only sell the soups. And so like if there is a spot where you can like count on someone selling good yeah. caldos, like mm -hmm. I'm there. I'm there and I'm going to send my family to, <laughs> yeah. to that place too. Yeah. So do you, you, you mentioned like that you kind of co-create with your mom and your brother has some input in saying uh -huh. like, oh, well, we should do this and we should do that. But mm -hmm. overall, where does your inspiration come from when you are thinking of new things to do for the, the restaurant? You know, I feel like um, a lot of it has to do with um, social media. <laughs> um, many times I, you know, get a lot of inspiration from there. And even like thinking about Mexico, how they do things in Mexico. And I feel like a little bit of here and there, that's how I get um, my inspiration. I started creating. Um, so what I had brought new to the restaurant ever since we took over was Aguas Frescas. And I know, you know, one day I was like, you know, a lot of restaurants serve only horchata, jamaica, and pretty much that's it, <laughs> or tamarindo. And I was like, you know, in Mexico, they have like tons of different flavors, like you name it, all of them. And it's all made of fresh fruit. So I started bringing that to the restaurant. I started making um, new aguas frescas of fruta fresca with like all kinds of flavors and Everybody loves it because, you know, people come here and they're like, you know, what, there's a different flavor every day. And people are like, you know, we don't see this at any restaurant. We just find Jamaica and Orchata. So, yeah, I know. You go to the mercados and you see like uh -huh. the rows and rows of the big jarros. Yes. Uh, with the, with the aguas. And uh -huh. you have the fresa and the piña and the horchata. And like you have all of them. Uh, and you're right, like usually in restaurants, it's only like those two 
mm -hmm. the horchata and the jamaica or the tamarindo yeah uh, so that's amazing that you bring more variety mm -hmm. to the restaurant yeah and even like i mentioned earlier like even i don't know i have people who came here and they're like i bet you that's not made out of fresh fruit i bet you you use the pack and we're like no we did not use the pack we use real fresh fruit <laughs> because they don't believe that we use fresh fruit to make our aguas frescas but we really do we don't use any of the powder yeah how have people influenced how you run your business or even just in life i know you do a lot with your family but is there anyone else, like, even through your schooling that has influenced you in what you're doing now? Um, I want to say my friend, Rachel, from Morinkin Cakes. Um, we influence, I, I think we both influence each other and we help each other out a lot. So it's funny, but so we actually lost our job around at the same time. And then who would have known that we both would have, would have been in the business, in, in the business now, you know? Yeah, she has her own business. I have mine. And um, I think like she, we help each other out a lot. Yeah, she's the one who got me connected with you. And I'm so thankful that you guys like hyped each other up and can both be on, on the podcast. I think you both have like really unique stories. And so I'm so thankful for that. Uh, so how did you guys meet? At work. We were actually working for the same company. And we both lost our jobs at the same time. So that we actually met at where we were working before. That's how we met. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of started this business, like she, like she started her business. You took over uh, your father's business around the same time. So do you lean on each other for like business support? Yes, all the time. So, you know, every time I have, every time I need some support or some questions or advice or, you know, I'm always like, okay, Rachel, I'm calling Rachel, I'm texting Rachel. Or, you know, I feel like um, she, I feel a lot of support from her end. And every time I have a question or something, I will reach out to her. I think community and relationships like that are so important, especially as entrepreneurs and really being intentional about surrounding yourself with people who are going to build you up, who are going to be a support and just like an overall friend when you need it, when times are kind of tricky. Um, yes. Is there any other community that you've really like been able to lean on, especially like with your, with your mom doing this with you as well? Mm -hmm. I want to say um, the Belmont Cregan community has helped a lot too. Like they have um, done different activities and, you know, to bring customers into the business. Also always sharing our social media, you know, posts and things like that. They have been really supportive and it really helps a lot. It helps a lot. I think one of the, probably one of the changes that you made during the transition from ownership and like as you're creating this this new image is like social media uh how have you implemented that or utilized that in your business recently so you know before um i started this business my father didn't know anything about you know technology so he wasn't using any facebook he wasn't using instagram he wasn't using none of that so when I took over, I, um, not right after, but slowly, I was like, you know what? Like, we need a Facebook page. We need a, an Instagram page. We need to get on social media because everything is social media now. So I slowly um, started creating, and I feel like that has helped a lot because everything is like social media now. You're marketing, you know, in social media, and it has, it has helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. I know it takes a lot of time. Do it does. You, are you the one that runs all of the social media? Yes, I am. <laughs> my mom, my mom doesn't use any of that, so I'm the one always, you know, running those social media pages. Yeah. yeah. Is there a specific platform that you have found has worked the best, like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? Um, you know, I feel like. 
they have all worked in different ways, but I feel like right now the one that has probably I want to say um, Facebook a little bit more just because the community is really, you know, on top of, you know, that and they really share all, all our posts and things like that. And it's really helpful on that part. Even though social media, like we, we say like, oh, are you connected with or like on social media? Each platform like is itself like you need to know how to utilize that platform to the best of that algorithm and that's how it gets so hard but i do agree that facebook is a great platform social media platform when you're trying to like outreach to a specific community is you said that you get some inspiration from tiktok how have you been able to use like tiktok in your business um so yes I started using TikTok and I find it really helpful because I feel like, you know, TikTok is one of the platforms that right now have been, you know, the most helpful just because everybody's on TikTok, you know. So um, I've been using TikTok also as inspiration when creating my own TikToks. And it's been really, really helpful. I like to follow a lot of, um, you know, different restaurants and even like um in other states like California, I like to get inspiration from them just because they, I feel like they're, they're very different just because um, I want to say they try doing more things like Mexico. And that's how I, you know, I try to bring that into the restaurant. Like they, how can I say it? Like they, um, they try to... Like esos antojitos y cosas así que, that we do in Mexico, they're always on that. So I, and I want to bring a little bit of that into the restaurant so I get inspiration from those restaurants. Yes, I think a lot of the people I follow on TikTok or Instagram in mm -hmm. California are like in the food space. Yes. And like they are like crushing it when it comes to like creating trends. Yes, and they are. I'm like, man, California has really got it going on in the food scene. <laughs> they do. Scene. Even like we start, so our, we have a hot Cheeto burrito that we brought into the restaurant. And that inspiration came from businesses from California. Because as you mentioned earlier, earlier they're really on it. And, I, you know, when I saw hot Cheetos and them creating things with hot Cheetos, I was like, wait a minute, like who doesn't, like a lot of teenagers love Hot Cheetos and we have a school across the street and, you know, let's create something with Hot Cheetos. And then we brought a Hot Cheeto burrito and it has been really popular. The kids love to eat that Hot Cheeto burrito. Oh my gosh. Now <laughs> I need to try this Hot Cheeto burrito. My yeah. stomach might not be happy, but I will be happy. <laughs> yeah. So growing up, did you have a favorite food or drink? And is that the same now? I want to say growing, like my favorite food has always been enchiladas. I don't know. I always crave enchiladas and I always want to eat enchiladas and it hasn't changed. It's always been the same. Do you have enchiladas on the menu? We do. We do have enchiladas. We offer asada, pastor, pollo, enchiladas verdes, enchiladas rojas. Mm -hmm. mm. That's that's good to know. Uh, <laughs> did you have a favorite drink growing up? Like, and it could be like seasonal or like a favorite agua. Um, horchata, always. <laughs> Every time, yeah, I always ask for horchata. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you also sell like cafecitos? We sell cafe, cafe este con canela. So we try to give it that hit, you know, that, you know, little taste que tenemos in Mexico, you know, so our coffee is made with a little touch of canela. Mm -hmm. I see that there are, and for people watching on YouTube, you can see that there is papel picado in your mm -hmm. restaurant. Um, yes. Did you change the effect? aesthetic in the restaurant like in the past few years we did so um we tried making a little bit of changes as i mentioned in the transition and then we created this mural behind me that shows a little bit like we have a lot of sayings and um like different sayings we have tenemos todo as you can see um 
just to give it a little touch of Mexico. I love that. Who who did the mural? It was one of my cousins and my brother who actually painted the mural for us. It looks beautiful. And I think, like, I'm excited to come into the restaurant and, like, see it. I think, even like, talking about social media, it's kind of fun when you can go to a space and it's, like, quote unquote, Instagrammable. Uh, I think that like helps bring people in and traffic because everyone wants to be like on Instagram and posting their photos of what they eat and where they're at. Uh, so I think that's a great addition. Yeah, it was something that we were thinking too. Like as I, like little by little, we started making changes. We're like, okay, what can we do? As you mentioned earlier, we needed something that was Instagrammable and that was, you know, the mural that we brought into the restaurant. Is there any, has there been any inspiring feedback that you have received from other people that have helped you, especially when times have been like really hard over the past few years? Um, yes, I want to say um, feedback from my husband. He has been really supportive. So there has been times when I have been like, you know, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You know, I'm closing. And I just say that out of nowhere, just when I feel really overwhelmed and he's like, you know, what are you saying? You know, you, you, you got this, you can do it. You know, um, it's just, you know, a lot of you feeling a lot of emotions at the moment. And that's why you're thinking like that, but, and it's true, you know, it's just being a business owner, especially a woman, I feel like it's really hard. So it's just, um, sometimes, you know, you think that, and, you know, my husband has been really supportive when he tells me, you know, he gives me, he's like, I mean, you can do it. You've been doing it. You've been handling it, handling it really well. So just don't say that, you know, just try to relax, take it, you know, slowly and everything will be fine. Yeah. Sometimes we need an outside perspective and an outside reminder because especially as entrepreneurs, like we can get so caught up in our own head, in our own thoughts. And it just takes that one person to be like, no, I believe in you. Keep going. And it, it gets us through. Yeah, you know, like those words that he tells me, like, you know, they're really helpful when he he's mentioned, you know, like if you took over this this business and your father thought that, you know, you could do it and he he was OK, you know, like you could do it like, you know, he wouldn't have just left anybody in this business if it if he didn't think that it was someone that had the potential to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you and your mom like lean on each other for support as well? All the time. <laughs> All the time. We always do because, um, I mean, it's hard. It really is hard, you know, being a business owner. And um, I feel like especially, I, I, every business in different ways, but I feel like, you know, we're open late too. So we close at 3 a.m. on weekends. And at 1 a.m. during weekdays. So sometimes it's just, you know, a lot. Closing at that time, opening early and, you know, just everything on top. You know, sometimes we're really just tired and we're like, okay, this is a lot. But we can do it. So we're always, you know, supporting each other all the time. Yeah, I know. My father used to own a restaurant in the near suburbs of Chicago and I remember when he was just starting out and I would work like from 6 a.m. to past 6 p.m. And it was the longest days, but it was also so fun and rewarding. But yeah, it's hard work. So it's, it's always important work. to have. Even if you're not like physically here or working at the restaurant, but behind scenes doing different things, you know, bringing merchandise, there's always things to do. It's it's hard and it's a lot of work. Like your mind is always busy. <laughs> yeah. Is there any encouragement or advice that you would give for to the next generation of maybe people who are looking to open their own restaurant? Yes, I would say, you know, that nothing is impossible. Anyone can do it. And if you are a woman, even if you're a woman, I know that sometimes, you know, we feel like, you know, I don't know, men are the ones who create more businesses or are like businessmen and things like that, but anyone can do it. And if you're a woman and you're, you know, want to create your business and we all have the potential and we can all do it. So don't give up, keep on going and you'll get there. 
Yes, that's great advice. So I would love for you to shout out where people can find you and especially the address of your business so people can go in and order food. Yeah, so we're located on the corner of Belmont and Austin. Our address is 3156 North Austin in Chicago, Illinois. And um, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook under Sutaqueria Dalis. Perfect. Thank you so much. This has been a great conversation, and I am for sure going to stop in sometime soon and have uh, bring the family. I'm going to bring the family, and um, I'll shout you out on our Instagram. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, I know that you open soon, so I will let you go. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm excited to meet you in person, and we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye. Talking with her brought up so many memories and feelings of when I helped my father open up his restaurant many years ago. I have a special place in my heart for restaurant owners because I know they work so hard to serve their communities. Okay, amigos, thank you so much for listening. There'll be a new episode every Tuesday. So after you listen, feel free to take a screenshot, post on Instagram and tag at Elevating La Cultura or send me a DM. You can also comment on this YouTube video if you're watching online. I always like to hear from people and how they resonate with the stories that I share. So leave a review on Apple Podcasts so we can get more ears listening to these stories and we can continue elevating La Cultura. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening. Y nos vemos next week. Adios.